welcome back to yet another module in research methods and statistics paper. Today we will learn how to write a research proposal. By the end of today's session, you will know the purpose of writing research proposals, the components of a research proposal, and you will get tips on how to write effective research proposals. First of all, what is a research proposal? It is a document where the researcher provides all the details of a proposed research project. It describes the problem that is going to be investigated, the scope and rationale of the investigation, the methods that will be used, the implementation process uh, and resources needed to conduct the investigation. Also the analysis plan. It will detail the methods used, the implementation process and resources that you require to conduct the research program and also the analysis methods. It will outline the entire purpose and implementation of a research project. Why do you need a research proposal? It is required to define your research project to an external audience, to identify the knowledge gap that exists in the issue that you're studying and which your pro project, your research project will address. To develop a plan of action for implementing your project, to demonstrate that the project has been conceptualized and planned in detail, that you know what you're doing, and to define the resources that would be required to accomplish this research project. It also helps establish your qualifications, expertise in the area that you're researching, and it serves as the basis for requesting funds. Also, if you're doing a master's or a PhD, you need a research proposal as part of your research process. Without the proposal, you will not get permission to conduct the research. So these are broadly the reasons you need to get a research proposal written. What are the components of a research proposal? Uh, some aspects of a research proposal may vary from one organization to the other, from one university to another. You need to find out what the requirements are in your university and follow it very carefully. For example, some might refer uh, to a section as background, some may call it introduction, some may call it uh, uh, putting your research within the framework of existing knowledge. Okay? You need to find out what that is. Okay? Uh, some institutions have fixed word limit or page limit, never exceed that. But the broad areas of a research proposal are a title page, an abstract, a table of contents, an introduction, a literature review, a method section, details on the research team, your budget, uh, your timeline, and bibliography or references. We will discuss each of these now. What does a title page contain? It will contain your name and other details in terms of where are you studying, who is your research guide, the year that you're submitting your proposal in, the title of your research, which should be concise, relevant to the study, and descriptive. Some, it should also catch the reader's attention. Sometimes it's better to write it at the end of your proposal because you then have a very clear idea of what your title will be. An abstract is an executive summary of your research proposal. It's about 150 to 300 words. It should have a brief mention of the research question, your objectives, hypothesis if it is a quantitative research, methodology in brief, and the design, the sample, and research tools. Once again, you might write the abstract after you've finished writing the entire proposal. Then you can pick this information from each of the sections. A table of contents, if your proposal is more than two or three pages long, where you have the different sections and the page numbers for each corresponding section. Okay. Now we come to the main sections of your research proposal, the introduction. It provides an orientation, it provides information on the main area of your project. So you give a brief overview of the theme of the research. You cover your goals or research questions. In brief, you state the justification, the rationale for your research. The hypothesis of your research is mentioned here if it is a quantitative research study. 
If it's a qualitative research, you might not have a hypothesis. And significance of the study, how will your study contribute to the body of literature that already exists? Once again, you might be able, you might write it last, once you've done the rest, you've done the literature review, you've done the methods, then you can write this because it helps synchronize all the information that you've provided. Now, the next section is the literature review section, uh, which focuses on the review of what work is already existing in this field and what are the gaps. Okay, you need to mention research findings already done and the gaps present both views for and against your question. Methodology is the most important section of a proposal. It describes your work plan and all the activities that you will carry out to conduct this project. Here you need to maintain a focus on your objectives, on your research question, hypothesis where necessary and use this section to explain how you would collect data to answer your research question or prove or disprove your hypothesis. This is where your funders or your research degree board will focus on most strongly because this is where you show that you have knowledge, that you know what you are doing. So be very careful and showcase your analytical skills and your planning skills in this section. Uh, there are subsections in this. You can understand those by looking at the information you need to cover. Okay? For example, you provide the design. What is the research design you are using? Who are your respondents? Are there any ethical implications for your research? If so, how have you handled them? What are your instruments or tools of data collection? What is your data collection procedure? And what is your analysis plan? This are, these are the broad categories. If you are using a qualitative research method, your proposal would have more information because qualitative research is an inductive process. So you will depend very heavily on the documents such as pro field notes, progress notes, process notes, journals, your research diary. So you need to specify what these documents are, how you are going to maintain them, how these are going to be used and how these are going to be analyzed. Details of a research team need to be given where you have a team. If it's a PhD research or a master's research, it's just you and your guide. So then you don't need to give these details. But if it is a project that you're doing in your organization, then all the members who are part of this research team, you would need to include this, a summary of their expertise and attach their CVs, annex them as at, uh, 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 to the proposal. You need a budget especially if you're seeking funds. So budget heads would include personal costs, not your own person, personal costs, but the number of people who are being involved in the team, admin costs, transportation, phone, internet expenses, software expenses, stationery, photocopying, printing expenses, and any other expenses that you might need. If you are writing a research proposal for a funder, then you need to follow the heads that the funding organization has given. It's also useful to link your budget to your timeline, which we will talk about in a minute. So they have a clear understanding of what you're doing, how much it's costing and when. Timeline, which we mentioned just a minute back, is essentially a list of steps that you're going to undertake and the time that is taken for each step. That's it. So you can do it as a table as well if you need. So, uh, and then the tenth and the final aspect of your research proposal is your bibliography or your reference list. This bibliography and reference list we are reiterating in every module because it is very essential to mention all your key citations, give the references properly to avoid plagiarism. Use the style that has been recommended by your institution for citing your bibliography or your reference list. Now you know what goes into a research proposal. How do you write an effective research proposal? So we give you here, I will talk about some tips that will help you do this better. These are related to the content and to the style of writing of your proposal. Content tips include provide a clear and adequate context 
to your study by citing important and landmark studies in your field. This will come from your reading. Present the work of other researchers, other people who have done work on this issue, other academicians accurately, kindly make no mistakes in presenting their work. Do not misinterpret what they are saying. Stay focused on your research question. One way to do it is write your research question up on a board when you're doing your uh, writing your research proposal. Only include information that relates to your research question. Present limitations of your research. Not every research will cover everything. You have limitations? That's fine. Just present it very, very clearly. Keep your arguments fact-based and persuasive. Do not get personal. Do not get carried away by emotions. They are fact-based yet persuasive. So use persuasive language. Define your contribution that your research is going to make very, very clearly but very concisely. One paragraph is enough. Or make it points but make it very clear, very concise and define it very, very nicely because this is your contribution. This is what is unique about your research. And your proposal, whether it will be accepted or rejected, will hinge on this particular fact. And if you make a budget, make sure that all your totals are correct. Kindly get someone else to check it, so that you don't have inaccuracies in your totals. Once you've completed a draft version of your research proposal, read it thoroughly, word by word. Get a friend or a peer to read it as well, because they might identify issues that you have forgotten. They might look at spelling errors and other errors that you might have forgotten. They might ask you to clarify concepts that are very clear in your head. So please get a friend to read through it. So these are content related tips. Now we come to writing or style related tips. Have a cover page and a, a table of contents where necessary. Include page numbers. Run a spell and grammar check. Please do not submit research proposals by, with spelling errors. We use Microsoft Word, running a spell and grammar check is very, very easy. Use the correct citation style that has been mentioned, that has been told to you for references and bibliography. Never plagiarize. Citations are needed in the text as well. Keep the proposal within the specified word or page limit. Use font such as Times New Roman and uh, Arial and keep the font size between 10 and 12 appropriately. And when you're done, you can use these points as a checklist to make sure you've done it correctly. So now you have learned how to write a research proposal, I hope. We'll summarize the key learnings. A research proposal is an essential document, so make sure it is written, written concisely, accurately, and as clearly as you can possibly do it. It describes all the elements of a proposed research pro uh, project. It indicates knowledge gaps which you, your research is going to address. It defines your plan of action, indicates the resources you will use, uh, how it'll, uh, you are going to get funding, it will help you get the funding, and it shows your expertise as a researcher or as the research team. The 10 components of a research proposal include Title, abstract, table of contents, introduction, literature review, methods, budget, timeline, and team composition, and finally bibliography. I hope having learned this module, gone through this presentation, you will find it easier to write your research proposal. Thank you so much.